this is a course on deep learning. This is the 2022 version. To reflect the rapid advances in the field, this course has been overhauled. We are going to talk about the overview of deep learning and the objective is to understand the importance of studying this field. Let us talk about artificial intelligence. Roughly speaking, artificial intelligence can be defined as machines exhibiting animal or human intelligence. Machines are computers that may or may not have a mechanical system or actuators, such as in robotics. We include both human and animal intelligence. Generally, humans exhibit more intelligent actions compared to animals. In addition, in the hierarchy of intelligence, humans exhibit more sophisticated type of thinking and creativity, like we can imagine how to build cars. However, there are certain skills that humans cannot do either because of the lack of sensing ability or simply because of physical limitations. For example, dogs can be trained to sense dangerous materials. This skill requires both an ultra-sensitive smell sensor and an accurate odor classifier, both of which humans lack. There are other definitions of artificial intelligence. For our purposes, we claim that an agent exhibits AI when it is able to perform a certain task. An agent can be a software entity or it might have a physical embodiment, such as in robotics. The question now is, building AI is supposed to be difficult and complex. Nature shows otherwise. For example, ants have limited number of brain cells and are almost blind, yet they are brilliant in logistics and teamwork. With no apparent leader, they build and dismantle body bridges on demand. Even the most sophisticated modern day neural network could not match the abilities of ants. Let us be clear about one thing. AI is not really new. The concept has been in existence since 1950s. In 1956, John McCarthy, then a professor at Dartmouth College, coined the term artificial intelligence. He described AI as every aspect of learning or any other feature of intelligence can in principle be so precisely described that a machine can be made to simulate it. Up until 1990s, symbolists used expert systems to dominate the field of AI. In contrast, connectionists, because neural networks are connected units, struggled to compete. In the 1990s, up until 2010s, machine learning as a subfield of AI flourish. Dominant machine learning algorithms like support vector machines and boosting were widely used and popular. ML is primarily characterized by engineered feature learning. In 2012, all of a sudden, a big change happened when AlexNet won the ImageNet 1K competition. Deep learning has since been the dominant field of AI, primarily because it was able to take advantage of the availability of large amount of data and compute to automatically learn features that boost the performance of models. Let us emphasize the differences between the good old-fashioned AI like 
rule-based AI, machine learning, and deep learning using face detection as an example. In a rule-based AI, we might formulate a rule like if skin color is present and there is a region exhibiting a certain symmetry, it must be a face. Note that this technique is brittle. It will fail in many occasions. With machine learning, we might use a cascade of hard filters. Each filter captures certain facial features like eyebrows or the bridge between both the eyes. In total, there are about 6,000 filters, but each one is very efficient. The filters are triggered in cascade. When the front end filter fail to detect certain features, the rest are no longer triggered. The succeeding filters are triggered only when the initial filters detect certain salient facial features. Meanwhile, in deep learning, we just need a big number of images where the facial regions are labeled using bounding boxes. Then the model automatically learns important features needed for face detection. When a novel image is presented, the deep learning model like YOLO, SSD, or MAS RCNN predicts the facial regions with a much better performance compared to hard cascade. Let us focus on deep learning. In 2012, a group of researchers from University of Toronto won the ImageNet 1K competition by a large margin compared to the second place. It achieved a top five accuracy of 84.7, which is 10.8% higher than the second place. The deep neural network architecture is called AlexNet which was named after one of its creators. AlexNet is the turning point of deep learning as a dominant field of AI. After AlexNet, deep learning dominated the competition and created neural network architectures that are still state-of-the-art, such as VGG, ResNet, and ResNext. Top five means the correct prediction is one of the five best guesses of the network. Top one means making the correct prediction. Please note that in ImageNet 1K, there are 1,000 classes to choose from. So random guess has top one accuracy of only 0.1%. Today, most neural network architectures are benchmarked using top one accuracy. So did a breakthrough happen in 2012? Not really, since all the basic building blocks of deep learning have been invented years before AlexNet. Neurons were used in perception in 1958, the Neocognitron, the predecessor of CNN in 1980. CNN was itself popularized in 1989. Backpropagation as an algorithm for adjusting neural network parameters in 1986. This is a photo of the perception machine. So what is new? It turned out that shallow networks are not as good as deep neural networks. The deeper the network, the more features it learns that are useful in making correct predictions. However, building and training deep neural networks is hard. It is hard because it requires a significant amount of computations. The computations are in the form of massive number of tensor multiplication and addition. Tensor is a generalization of vectors and matrices. CPUs are not simply built for this task. However, 
there is a class of processors used in gaming called graphics processing units or GPUs that are built for such kind of computations. Graphics rendering in video games requires a lot of tensor multiplication and addition, exactly what is needed in deep neural networks. Next is data. Generally, the more training data that is available, the better is the performance of deep learning models. ImageNet 1K has 1.2 million training data. So that becomes a huge advantage for AlexNet. To put the massive amount of computations in perspective, let us take a look at CPU and GPU. AMD Ryzen Threadripper 3970X has 64 cores uh, operating at 3.7 gigahertz, can do 6.9 teraflops. It can do scalar computations. It has few cores, but very fast. It is like having a supercar for delivering packages it can quickly get to the destination, but can only deliver few packages per day because the car can only carry few boxes. Computation-wise, it cannot do massive amount of computations per unit time. Meanwhile, NVIDIA RTX 3090 GPU has 10,496 CUDA cores operating at 1.4 gigahertz. It can do 35.6 teraflops. Roughly, each CUDA core is a simple CPU core. It can do scalar computations and it is suitable for parallel processing. Well, much slower when it is operating in parallel, 10,000 cores can accomplish a lot of computations per unit time. GPU is like using a big truck for delivering packages, slow, but can carry thousands of packages. Therefore, the net effect is it can deliver a lot more packages per day. Newer generations of GPUs have tensor cores they can do tensor operations. Let us visualize tensor cores in the next slide. To illustrate how fast is tensor core, this animation shows tensor computations when done step-by-step -step versus parallel in tensor cores. Clearly, we can notice the significant speed up with tensor cores. After AlexNet, the rest is history. Today, it is not uncommon to achieve near 90% top one accuracy in ImageNet 1K. Please note that at the end of the day, deep learning is not just about performance or accuracy. It is actually a multifaceted problem that includes efficiency and deployability considerations. Also note that deep learning is not all about image recognition or vision. Recall that AI is about perceiving the environment and making a decision in order to achieve a certain goal. Thank you for listening for information. Uh, in addition to what we discussed here, we have listed the references in this slide.